enmeshment, you've probably heard the term, and you may have even wondered, was my family of origin enmeshed or do, am I enmeshed in my current relationship, right? So today's video, I'm going to go into the definition of enmeshment as it relates to relationships in general, and then specifically how it develops in families, which is where we learn it. And I'd like to differentiate for you the difference between a close-knit family, right? A healthy, connected family and an enmeshed family. We'll then talk about why it's such a problem if a family is enmeshed. And then also what you might need to work on if you come from an enmeshed family and you are ready to start living a more authentic, joyful life. So enmeshed relationships are ones in which the boundaries are very intertwined between the two people or the larger group, where boundaries are messy, unclear. People aren't really allowed to individuate who's responsible for different things and what emotions each person is feeling. It's all blurred together. Now, enmeshment exists on a spectrum, right? There are very, very severely enmeshed relationships and families, and then there are relationships and families that are enmeshed, but just a little bit really sort of within the boundaries of what might be normal for the society. And our societies and cultures have different levels of enmeshment. But remember, as I alluded to in the intro, enmeshment and closeness are not the same thing. So let's take a moment and look at the Merriam-Webster definition of enmesh. So enmesh is to catch or entangle. So really thinking about that, like catching and entangling, that is not the same thing as closeness, right? Other synonyms for enmesh are to trap, to tangle, to snare. So enmesh relationships are like a tangle, like a web that you can't really get out of. Now, some of you might be having a very visceral reaction to thinking of the word in that way, but that is sort of how it feels when we are in an overly enmeshed relationship or family. So healthy relationships can be seen as ones that navigate that space of togetherness and individuation. Health for an individual could be seen as both self-actualization, self-differentiation, and closeness and connection to others. So those healthy dichotomies are not possible in an enmeshed family. The concept of family enmeshment was introduced by a family therapist named Salvador Mnuchin in the early 70s, and his work has been developed and researched and built on by others. So an enmeshed family is one which exerts enormous control over family members to follow the same belief systems, share the same emotions, share the same hopes and desires for the future. Really, loyalty to the family becomes the most important thing. Now, often in an enmeshed family, there is one or just a few people who really dominate the family, and everybody else kind of kowtows to them, tries to make them happy, tries to follow what they want, right? So there's one or just a few people who have enormous power, and everyone else is supposed to toe the line. In enmeshed families, the emotional boundaries are not clear who's responsible for different emotions, right, is just not made clear. And there are certain people in the family who take a lot of responsibility for everybody's emotions. And then there's usually other people in the family, often the ones with the power, who take no responsibility for their own emotions. But often when people grow up in an enmeshed family, they don't even know what their own emotions are. And this is supported and sustained by the family system. Now, family system is a concept in family therapy, but it's a good one to begin to understand because systems have certain patterns that are really challenging to change. And those patterns get passed down from one generation to the next to the next. So if you grew up in an enmeshed family, most likely your parents grew up in an enmeshed family and they're in, you know, beyond and beyond every generation since then. In an enmeshed family, 
the behaviors of each individual are seen to reflect on the whole family. And that's why the family can come down on somebody who's not behaving properly or not exhibiting the values they want in the outer world, right? Like you represent me. I am not separate from you. If you aren't doing what I think is right, then I feel shame. I feel anxious. So hopefully with this description, you're getting a sense of how all the emotional boundaries are just that tangled web. People can't peel themselves out, right? And then if some people go into therapy and they begin to work on this and they begin to say, hey, I do want to individuate. I do want to express who I truly am in the world. And they begin to set healthy boundaries. Well, they'll get a lot of pushback. They'll get a lot of resistance. They might be put down. A very common thing in an enmeshed family would be to make fun of the person setting healthy boundaries or really be disrespectful to them for trying to set those boundaries, tell them that they're weird or get furious at them or all of the above. So setting healthy boundaries within an enmeshed family system can be extremely hard. And even understanding what a healthy boundary is, that is really hard for people from enmeshed families. That takes significant work and self-help and possibly therapy. So while I'm talking about boundaries, I want to interrupt this just very short and let you know that I do have a free quiz, your boundary personality type. And this quiz actually kind of highlights the positive side of your personality that might be causing problems with your boundary setting. And under that positive self-concept or positive belief, there might actually be a negative core belief that, again, is interrupting your ability to set healthy boundaries and have healthy relationships. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this concept at the end of this video, how a negative core belief can underlie boundary difficulties and how negative core beliefs can come from an enmeshed family. But anyway, the quiz, it's a short quiz. I believe it will give you some good insight. I'll put the URL right here. And then the link is also in the notes to this video. All right, we're back to the topic. But basically in an enmeshed family system, people can be punished and excluded for being individuals, for having autonomy, for expressing who they are, you know, as individuals on this planet. So having said this, hopefully the difference between enmeshment and closeness is making sense to you because sometimes people will feel like, well, I want a close family. I want people who care about me and ask me lots of questions about what's going on with me, right? So the difference, there's a number of differences. In a close-knit family, there may be a fair amount of cohesion. Cohesion meaning we share the same values, we share the same approaches to the world, perhaps the same religion or politics, or we have similar personality traits, right? So there can be a lot of cohesion in families that can be healthy, and healthy families with cohesion are seen to really be tied to the individual mental health of each member. So that can be a good thing. In a close-knit family, people can be individuals. They can have different interests, right? They can have different personality quirks. They can move to places in the world that they need to move to to fulfill their mission in life or to follow a loved one. That doesn't mean people won't be sad and upset, but they won't be manipulated and made to feel guilty for really going for something that's going to improve their own life. In a close-knit family, people can share what they're going through emotionally and receive support, which is a wonderful thing. In an enmeshed family, people might feel like they can share what they're going through, but if it doesn't fall in line with those people who are in power, the information they share could be used against them. They could be put down for that information. They could be told they're wrong. No, you really don't feel that way. Somehow the inner world of the individual can be a threat to the entire system. That's what an enmeshed family will look like. So what are the problems that come from an enmeshed family? There's a number of them. One that I've alluded to already is that the enmeshment pattern can get passed down from generation to generation. So what does this mean? This means that somebody who perhaps took on the caretaker role in an enmeshed family might grow up and marry an abuser 
or marry somebody who wants to dominate the world the way that the family member dominated the caretaker's role when they were little, right? So it can cause people to repeat unhealthy boundaries. Enmeshment can also make people feel really lonely because they are never comfortable letting people know who they really are. To let your true self shine in an enmeshed family means to be abused, basically, to be corrected, to be told you're not okay, to feel a lot of shame. Shame and guilt are predominant emotions of many people who come from enmeshed families. And another problem that comes out of enmeshed families is that people can't emotionally regulate. Emotional regulation is a key sign of health, emotional health, mental health, being able to calm yourself down when you're anxious or lift yourself up when you're feeling low, regulating your own emotions, not getting overly angry, right? All of that is within the realm of emotional regulation. And if you grow up in an enmeshed family and you don't even know what your emotions are versus somebody else's emotions, whose emotions are you feeling? How are you going to be able to regulate them? And you're taught to basically regulate your emotions by picking up on what the main people in the family are feeling or the overall family. You have to join in with everybody else, or you may even just simply do it automatically. So emotional regulation is extremely difficult. I think I'm on about the fifth reason that enmeshed families are problematic, but they have been linked to abuse, right? If a family system is so strong and it is dominated by a certain power balance, it can facilitate abuse within a family. And this could be many different types of abuse, but there is a link there. The sixth reason that enmeshed families are a problem is that you're not allowed to individuate. You can't achieve what you want to achieve. You can't express your individuality, right? That's really at the core. And this actually leads to something called cutoff. So enmeshment and cutoff are the two sides of the same coin. An enmeshed family does not always have all the family members close. Usually there's like Uncle Joe, we haven't talked about or talked to in seven years, or, you know, Aunt Susie, nobody in the family can talk to her, or there's a couple of people in the family that if you talk to them, then your main family will reject you or criticize you. So the individuation, the lack of individuation, forces people to actually totally leave the family system and then get excluded from it. So those kind of go together, that it's both hard for you as the individual to individuate, and then also it causes all this cutoff in family systems. Another problem is that people do end up with really negative core beliefs about themselves and the world, and they may not feel that the world outside their family is safe, even though they kind of know on some level that the fam- that the world inside their family isn't safe. But there really might be a feeling that the world out there is not safe for you. So the negative core belief could be around not feeling safe, or it really could be around, I'm bad because any opinion that I have, like I know I have these opinions, but if I say them, then I'm bad within the family system. So it can lead to some pretty deep negative core beliefs. And then lastly, obviously, lack of healthy boundaries that can follow you through life. So, okay, what do you do about it? This will be a process. This will be a journey. You might already be, you know, three quarters of the way through your journey or half of the way, or you might be at the very beginning, but this will take time. It will take support probably from other people. Any work you can do to allow yourself to really get in touch with who you are, what you want, what makes you happy, what makes you shine. Let yourself explore those things. You don't have to share with your family system that you're exploring these, right? You can do this exploration on your own. Strengthening your self-concept might require working with a therapist or a coach. Some people can do a fair amount of this work with self-help, but a lot of people really do need assistance. And then, of course, learning to figure out what are healthy boundaries, and what's a healthy relationship look like. And if you feel like you'd like some more assistance on this from me, if this approach, the approach that I have is resonating for you, I have developed a course which really is about 
boundaries for people from enmeshed families. If you grew up enmeshed or parentified, if you tend to be a caretaker in most of your relationships, and if you struggle with boundaries in all sorts of ways, this course is for you. So the link for the course, I'll post it here on the screen. There's information on it below. And then as I mentioned earlier, I do have a quiz on what's your boundary personality type. And this quiz actually identifies what the negative core belief is underneath the difficulty you have setting boundaries. So I'm really hoping that these resources can be helpful for you and help you move forward, bringing your unique, individual, beautiful gifts to the world. All right. See you next week.